Hello there and welcome back to Genomi Stitch Club UK. My name is Julia and I'm one of the UK educators here and the idea of this monthly video is basically to get you looking at more stitches, feet, uh, techniques etc on your sewing machine and just to help you get the best out of your Genomi sewing machines. So this time I thought we'd take a look at an accessory that I was quite excited to get into my sewing room to be honest because I've been eyeing this one up for quite some time and that is the circular attachment. Um, circles are notoriously hard to draw let alone to sew around and it's not that you can't do them of course you can but there are certain times when this little baby here especially with decorative stitches and I think you all know by now I'm obsessed with decorative stitches when this really does help um, all kinds of projects actually so I just wanted to look at I'm going to go through the basics of how you put it on and how you use it and then going to make a little project which I thought might be a good one for Christmas um, I will have a brief little run through of other ways you can use it I will put a link below actually because Jane Brogan did a video on quilting um, with decorative stitches with this attachment as well so I will put that link in there because obviously there's a lot more than I can fit in just one of these videos so I'm going to turn you around to the sewing machine and we'll have a little look at how you put this attachment on and get going. So this is the circular attachment and this is for the Easy Set Bobbin models, which is what I've got here on this atelier. It's really, really important that you make sure that you get the right attachment for your machine. Uh, they're, because they're different they have to slot in this little bit here so it depends very much on the shape of your plate and also uh, the little uh, bit that slides off when you uh, put your bobbin in if in doubt I would always say uh, give a call give a call to Stockport and they will soon tell you exactly which one will go with your model of your machine so that's the first thing that we need to do is remove that put it somewhere safe for goodness sake it's clear i spend most of my time trying to find that little thing because it is clear and of course you can't see it in your actual uh, box for your attachment be wary when taking it out this little black bit here goes over a really really sharp pin okay that's the pivot so do try and keep that on at all times when you're twiddling about also in there will be a screw i think on one of them you don't get a screw but uh, so on this one i've got a screw because there's a hole in the plate that i'm going to screw it into so if I slot that in, can you see it literally just sits in there. When you take it out of that box, and this is the same for quite a lot of these things, this card, don't throw it away because look, there's instructions inside. Okay, and uh, it kind of talks you through how to do all sorts of different things and machine settings and things like that. So that's really useful so don't throw that away definitely so I popped it in here I'm going to get my screw out I'm going to bring you in a little bit Cla, so that you can see so one thing that's really important before we actually pop this in is make sure you've got your bobbin in um, and make sure that bobbin is full as well. I'm using a bobbin fill on here because I, I often do when I'm doing a plique. So I don't need to change the colour of the bobbin um, as I'm doing this, this work. But kind of think about that because there is a little screw. So you don't necessarily want to be unscrewing it all the time, do you? So anyway, that drops in over the actual bobbin case there. And then this little screw 
goes in at the side. I'm trying to keep you as close in as possible so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. And then once I've done hand tight, I'm going to go in with my little screwdriver and just tighten that up. Okay, so we're now good to go. So this is going to be the pin that's going to provide the pivot for the circle. So as I say, keep that little black bit as on there until you absolutely have to take it off just to protect yourself. And this here is the slide and then the lock. You just push it up to lock it to stop it sliding along. And you can get all kinds of different sizes of circles and that's what I want to show you. And I, you know as you're watching hopefully you're starting to think of all the things that this might actually be useful for so i'm just going to come back out again there we go so what i've got here for this little project i've just got i'm going to make some little coaster coasters <clears throat> i've got a six inch square this is an old bit of denim i've actually used the underside of the denim because it's slightly lighter and in the middle, I've got another square, roughly cut square of yellow, which is going to be my actual uh, lemon slice and my circle. On the underside, I've got stitch and tear interfacing has been ironed on and I've marked a cross so that I can find the centre of my six inch square because that is what's going to sit on here. So I'm just going to slide it under there. And then I can remove that pin and then under here, I can then, let's see if I can get you in closer again. There we go. So I can actually get the center of that onto that pin and then pop the little safety thing back on. Okay, now this is interfaced. This isn't stuck down because what I want to do is I want to stitch my circle and then trim it away. So I'm not going to use Bonderweb or anything. And this is the most accurate way of getting all your circles to kind of fit once you're using a gadget like this. We're going to stitch this out in the same way as if I was, um, if we were doing a plique on an actual embroidery machine and we had um, a, an actual digital embroidery program. You stitch it out, you then trim it up and then you actually do the edge stitching, the satin stitch or whatever. So we're going to use that same principle. So I'm going to shift this along until I'm happy with the size. I was using about five. There are measurements on here. Um, so if you're going to do a project where you're doing lots of things the same, then make sure that you actually use your measurement measurements or even use a little tiny bit of masking tape or a sticker so that you're going to get the same spot every time okay it does <coughs> it is pivoting quite happily and I just want to make sure that it's not too big as we go round because I've got other things to do on the side I'm going to make that a wee bit smaller there we go and then I'm going to drop my presser foot. I am just on a regular straight stitch here. And I'm going to pop this finger. I'm not pushing down. I'm just holding it in place, basically. And this finger, I'm just going to make sure that, as I say, because this isn't stuck down, I don't want this to ruck up in front. So you'll find that even without your assistance, this will just pivot round. And that's the real key, I think, is making sure that it has that freedom to pivot. I'll go through doing a slightly larger project in a minute. Now, if you find that when you are starting to get to the end, that it's kind of you're getting a little pucker or something like that, then just slow down and smooth it out. So again, I'm just going to hold my finger on there and I'm just going to smooth this bit out because I don't want to shift it because what I want is that I want it to actually come back and meet exactly where it started okay so once I've done that circle I'm going to remove it so let's get cut the thread first that would help there we go and I'm going to take that off and I'm just going to pop my little catch back on 
and then we can go in and trim right up to the edge here of that circle we've just stitched because this is our basting stitch I suppose you would call it so I'm going as close as I can I don't obviously want to cut into the stitching so make sure you've got a nice sharp little pair of scissors Out so you can see so I've now trimmed up that circle so I now want to do the next start part of the process or oh, put me spare teeth in hang on so I can go back in and as I say I've got that mark there so I can find I want to find exactly the same hole you can put a little bit of masking tape on your fabric as well to protect it if you want to it's going to depend on the fabric and um, be wary don't use anything too sticky uh, because it might stop it it might make that pivot pin sticky and then it won't be able to go around so we're back this is still in the same place this is still in the same place if i drop that presser foot you'll see that the red line where my stitching is look is exactly in the same place now I want to do a satin stitch so I'm going to go into my zigzag and I'm going to take the stitch length close that right up so I'm on 0.4 and I'm going to take the width of my zigzag I'm going to put it I, I was on zero from a previous project it doesn't usually go that quite that far up and um, I'm going to put it on 4.5 OK, because what I want and I'm now going to do a couple of little stitches, I'm going to take it through the process to make sure that it is hitting both sides, which is what you would do anyway if you were doing um, a zigzag. So I'm going to bring you in again because I want you to see. Sorry to keep going in and out, but I think this is really important that you see exactly what's going on so that it's going to hit either side. So I'm on my satin stitch. And I can now do the same thing, just let it pivot gently round. So again, I just keep my finger on there. I find sometimes if I've got um, a few layers of things, then it's quite useful because that might ease its way up if this bit here is a little bit thicker. So, And then I'm just letting it run round, but just smoothing it out as I go. If it's got interfacing under it generally it's it's all good to go it's when you've got things like um wadding or something fluffy that's gonna maybe catch on various bits and pieces as you're stitching round so as we come in the end again I'm just going to keep that nice and flat it's quite mesmerizing isn't it watching this you always see people at shows standing in front of the embroidery machines being mesmerized and there we are we've crossed over where we've begun so I'm just going to do my little lock off stitch and cut my thread so I've now got my perfect circle which is now perfectly satin stitched as well. So I think you can already see that if you wanted to do a quilt with different color circles, a scrappy quilt, how nice this would be. You could do different size circles, couldn't you, within each block, how lovely. But we're gonna turn this into a slice of lemon. So this is the rind. Now, what I want to do as well is I now want to define this line. And again, this is a technique that um, you'd see on an embroidery machine. So I'm using the triple stitch 
okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my needle position because I want to come in really close here so I'm just moving my needle across keeping an eye of where it's going and then I'm going to drop that down and then I'm just going to use the crank to see yep there we go so I think you can see I'm literally on the edge there and then start stitching again and once again it's just gonna go completely around now you can do this job without and I have done lots because this is a this is a new a new thing in my sewing room the circular attachment I've been thinking about it for quite some time I've had a play on one in the past um, But this, look at this, absolutely perfect. So like I say, you can do this by eye, but especially if you were going to do an awful lot of these. So there we go, look, perfect. So we've got that perfect edge all the way around our circle. So we could move our needle position again and just take it over a couple of millimeters and do a second line on that as well if we wanted to we could then go out with lots of different variegated stitches um, different decorative stitches threads etc etc but as I say this is a coaster so what I'm now going to do I'm going to cut that thread and I'm now going to take that off so that I can move it along so that my foot and then push it up again so it's in place so that my foot is now outside of here so it's going to spin around there because what I want to do now is lettering and this is what I, I love with this actually I think that's such a nice thing to do if you have lettering so I'm going to go into my lettering and I'm going to do the biggest uh, block lettering on here, the nine mil for this. Um, so what should we do? Let's say uh, time for gin. Here we go. So time for gin. Gap. And once I've got that in, we're ready to go. So off we go. And again, I'm going to keep my finger on here because with the lettering, it does, like with some of the fancy stitches, it does sort of bounce around a bit because it's going up and down and sideways, etc. So just keep your finger gently on the top there. Don't go too wild with the speed. It's going to like doing the lettering because it's got that nice stitch and tear interfacing, which is its favourite thing. But look, it's just circling around. So we're nearly done. Okay. There we go. So we've done that. I'm just going to cut that thread. And then I'm just going to move it on only about half an inch and I'm going to go into my decorative stitches and now I'm going to find the French knot stitch. And then I'm just going to do a few dot dot dots. Um, the main reason being I'm never sure about punctuation so I'm a big fan of the dot dot dot. Dot 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 or exclamation mark they're my default positions. So if you ever receive an email from me, <laughs> that's what you're going to get. And now you know why I've given away my secret. Okay. So I'm now just going to finish off. I've marked out, I've drawn a circle and divided it into six segments. And I'm just using the triple stitch to just go up. I, I'm not bothered if this circle isn't quite straight now, because I think that's actually going to look quite nice and I'm going up to the middle and then down and along and I'm leaving 
a little gap in between. So as I come to this next line, I'm going to go up to the centre. Stop in the middle and then do one stitch, bearing in mind it's a triple, and then come back down. So there's just only like a millimetre gap between each, but just to make them, you know, look like actual segments, I think you can kind of see what's going on here. You can go much slower, I'm sort of speeding through a little bit here, as per usual. Now to finish off, I've put a couple of little bonder webbed leaves on here and again use triple stitch with variegated stitch and now I've just then done a simple back and bind for these. So I've cut the, this was a six inch square so I've cut an eight inch square so that I've got the inch all the way round and then I can just do that little, it's like an aeroplane fold. Fold it, fold it again so that it meets up in this corner. You can use a screwdriver or something. As long as I get it close enough, I'm going to show you in a minute how I then finish this on the machine. So I go round in turn and then it's always going to be this this last one that's just a wee bit tricky. So I'm just folding it under. So you're getting about a half inch. Now I do the corners first and then I'm going to go along and twiddle with this middle section. And I do like clips for this rather than um, pins. So I'm now going to take this to the machine so that I can just top stitch that all the way around. So this is my favourite foot for top stitching. It's actually the G foot, the blind hem foot. And it's one of those that's got a lip to it because what I'd like is it sitting in here as it stitches along because it means you can get much, much closer to the edge. So I'm going to pop that one on. And I've got my stitches all set up. It's just on a regular straight stitch. You could do one of your fancy stitches or even a blanket stitch if you wanted to. So I'm going to start on a straight bit because that's always the best place to start. I'm going to drop the presser foot down. And because I'm going to see the underneath, and I think I may have waved one around that I didn't do that, I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up. But before I do that, the key with this foot is actually getting your needle in exactly the right place. So at the moment, it's too far over. It's going to miss the green so I'm going to move it all the way across until I get in the sweet spot. So if I just drop it down, I'm literally about a millimeter, two millimeters. I'm just going to go, go again. That's better. So I'm going to just do needle down up so I can bring my bobbin thread up to the top. There it is. And then needle down again and then I can just walk it round and I'm going to keep my screwdriver handy because that's what I use for just flattening stuff down as you walk through so when I get to the corner I'm using that screwdriver so because I want it to walk across my mitre so that when I swivel my actual foot is going to go back down sorry I'm keep the camera so close I keep knocking it in the right place if it's not then I can just lift that needle up and just alter it and then pop it down nine times out of ten you get it in the right the right place so there we go all done can go in and trim 
the starting point there. So that's my little set of coasters done, ready to go with somebody's present for Christmas. I'll bring you out to the front now. So there you have it, lots of ideas I hope coming into your mind about how to use this little baby. Um, as I said, I have done a little set of these coasters ready for a Christmas present. I've also started looking at uh, some specifically Christmas ones where look, I fussy cut some scraps of fabric that I've got around uh, so that I can start working on some specific Christmas stuff also and here we have a little badge so if you've got a jacket or a sweatshirt or something that you wanted to um, put a little something on I've just put that completely onto felt so that you can then stitch it onto something maybe patch a pair of jeans or a jacket or something and I've only just started this is a bit of a prototype of thinking well how can I do this uh, for Christmas decorations as well so that's my brain already going into overdrive and I hope yours is as well usual things any questions queries etc pop them in the comments below and if you want to give me a little thumbs up if this is the thing if you're enjoying what we're doing and it's helpful that would be absolutely brilliant and if you haven't already why don't you subscribe at Genoma UK on YouTube so that you'll get notifications every time we pop a new video onto the channel because there's lots and lots of information on there um, to get you going on your machines so lovely to have you with me and I will see you next month.